Hi, welcome to Japan by Food. I'm your host, Shizuka Anderson. Today I am in Nikko City, Tochigi Prefecture, and today's episode is all about Tochigi beef. You guys may be familiar with Kobe beef, but Tochigi beef is also really, really good. It's actually some of the top ranking beef in Japan, and Tochigi Prefecture is actually the sixth largest producer of beef in the whole country. So today I'm gonna to be checking out a few popular restaurants that serve Tochigi beef, and let's see if Tochigi beef is really as good as they say it is. Let's go. Alright, here we are. We are at Steakhouse Mihashi. It's a very rustic looking steakhouse. It's been around for about 40 years. And today I'm going to be trying this. Sakura Hambagu. Hambagu is a Japanese take on Western food that's been around in Japan for quite a long time. Basically, it is a hamburger patty without the bun. And you enjoy it with sometimes cheese on top, different sauces, and you eat it with a knife and fork. So let's try the cherry blossom version of the Hambagu. Let's go inside. Konnichiwa. Hello. And I love you can see the road, a little bit of the town behind me. Yay, I can't wait to eat. <laughs> okay, they have a lot of different kinds of beef, grilled shrimp, some delicious looking desserts, like a caramelized apple, cheesecake. Okay, but today we're gonna get the Sakura hamburger steak, or as we say in Japanese, Hambagu. Let's give it a try. I love the ambience of this restaurant. It feels a little bit like a kuminka. The lights also look really, really old fashioned. Really beautiful. This <laughs> Wow. Alright, let's dig into our amazing Sakura Cherry Blossom Hambagu steak. Here we go. Let's cut into it. Oh! Look at the juice! Oh, Hontoni juicy, isn't it? Whoa, look at that juice. <gasps> look at that. That is a decadent hamburger steak. So we gotta do this right. So I'm gonna get some of the garlic butter with the parsley on top. Get a little bit more of this, <gasps> this cheese sauce because it's on a, a crispy tip bun plate, you get this like crispy cheese that's dripping with fat. That's how you know it's good. I'm gonna put some cheese on top. It's a combination of Gruyere, Brie, and Gorgonzola cheese. So excited. Itadakimasu. Mmm! Wow. That is really good. Most commonly in Japanese hamburger steak shops, they usually have a lovely steak sauce on top. But in this case, we've got cheese, and not only is it cheese, it's that rich, like sharp cheese taste from the gorgonzola, the creaminess of the brie. I never thought that cheese sauce could be this good with hamburger steak before. This is worth a try. So this cherry blossom is a pickled salted cherry blossom, which is very common in Sakura tea, cherry blossom tea in Japan. It's a little bit salty. It's not just umami and cheesiness anymore. It's a little bit of that like freshness from the pickled cherry blossom. That's really nice. You can enjoy so many flavors with the cherry blossom. We're gonna take a little bit of bread. It's so crispy. Look at this baguette. Oh, and it's fluffy on the inside. Mm, there's no way this is not gonna be good. Here we go. Mmm. 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 Oh, shit. 
Well, there you have it, a Japanese take on Western food that's been around for 50 years, and all of it was incredible. I wholeheartedly recommend this steakhouse. And the Sakura Hambago steak is on point. It's so good. I'm gonna continue working on this delicious steak, and then we've got more. So let's go check out the next restaurant. Our next restaurant is Meiji no Yakata. As you can see, it is a gorgeous building and is registered as a national tangible cultural property. It was originally built as a Western style cottage for an American merchant named F.W. Horn, who was the first person to introduce the gramophone, or more popularly, the record player to Japan. So this is a really historical building. Let's go inside and try some tochigi beef. This is beautiful. What? Ah, segoi. Kotsuna, ちなみに. お写真に写ってる方はい。I'm just blown away by the size of this house. I wonder what they used to use this room for back when people lived in this house. Can you imagine just being a lady or a gentleman standing here in your suit and your lovely dress, just looking out at the wonderful drawing room? So this was a gramophone that was made specifically for the Japanese market, I imagine. Oh! Oh, it's so ね、天田ロイステーキになります。おお、美味しそう。ステーキソースですね。こちらでおかけさせていただきますね。はい、お願いします。これは何ソースなんですか?こちらは和風のソースになっておりまして、玉ねぎですとか、え、にんにくでお
Mmm. Well, I'm gonna continue working on my meals. The tenderloin steak was amazing. The hashed beef is also fantastic. We have one more stop after this. One more tochigi beef. So let's head over there. We are at our final location for today to try some tochigi beef. This is the Kanaya Hotel. As you can see, it is also a really classic hotel that's been around for a very long time. So let's go see what it looks like inside and try some tochigi beef. Beautiful. Oh my goodness. Look how classic the design is. This incredible. This is a glamorous hotel. Look at the detailing on the roof. It seems to be a lovely fusion of classic Western style hotel and Japanese elements. I think I know what I'm gonna get. I think I'm gonna try the Kirifuri beef tenderloin steak with mushroom sauce, Kanaya style. All right, I now have my luxurious tochigi beef dinner. It looks fantastic. It's a tenderloin steak as well, but this time with a classic mushroom sauce. This hotel has actually been here at the current location since 1893. It opened even before then as a smaller residence for foreign guests to stay in, especially notable foreign guests such as Albert Einstein. Helen Keller and Anne Sullivan stayed at this hotel before, so I'm really feeling a lot of history on my visit today. I love the gravy boat. <laughs> it just makes you feel so fancy. So I'm going to dress the tenderloin steak with some mushroom sauce and they use Japanese mushrooms. I feel like a princess. So today I am Princess Shizuka and I'm going to be eating my very luxurious tochigi beef steak with mushroom sauce. Let's dig in. Ooh. Uh oh, there we go. That is a delicious looking steak. Here we go. Itadakimasu. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. That is really good. This is also a tenderloin steak, but it has a unique flavor of its own. It's completely different from our previous steak that we had. The mushroom sauce brings out a whole different flavor profile. It's a creamy, like stew-like mushroom sauce. The meat is also a little bit firmer than the previous steak, but it has a little bit more bite to it, but it is still very tender, very juicy. So you can really enjoy a different flavor, a different texture, but it is equally delicious. Mmm. Shall we try some of the vegetables too? We have an assortment of veggies. Little bites because I'm a lady. Here we go. Mmm, mmm, that is crunchy. And why not try the salad as well with the French dressing? Here we go. Mmm, mmm, this is also lovely. It's a very light, refreshing vinaigrette. It tastes a little bit citrusy, very refreshing. Well, I think I've experienced what it might be like to be a princess visiting Japan a hundred years ago, but I enjoyed every single dish that I've had today. Each building had so much history and I enjoyed just being in each restaurant as much as I enjoyed the food itself. I hope that you guys enjoyed these videos. If you did, make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And we will, of course, see you in another episode of Japan by Food. See you guys next time.